can you sure. tell us briefly uh, what the story is about? So, yeah, Sea Dragon is about Mary Anning, who's a, an English paleontologist um, working in, in the early 1800s. Um, and it centers around her discovery of an ichthyosaur, mm -hmm. which um, was kind of a new discovery at the time. Mm -hmm. it, she, she was kind of, she was working at a time where kind of big leaps were being made in science, but kind of traditional values still held really strong. Mm -hmm. um, and so when Mary found this thing, kind of a lot of her ideas around it ran very counter to, to what most people in England thought at the time mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, how the world was created. Mm -hmm. uh, it was still, you know, creationist ideas were still kind of the leading ideas at the time. Okay. And so, you know, Mary's suggestion that this creature she's found, you know, her suggestion that it could be millions of years old, you know, was, was sort of not, not kind of warmly welcomed. Um, and on top of that, of course, Mary was, she was a woman at a time where there weren't many women in science. Um, and she was from a very working class background mm -hmm. at a time where there weren't, where, you know, science was quite an elitist, um, quite an elitist pursuit. So it's kind of about, you know, it's kind of about the struggles she faced to get recognition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but obviously we didn't have kind of a feature length film to explore this in. So we kind of, we kind of adopted this heist narrative. Mm -hmm. So to, to kind of get across the sense of, of kind of to sharpen the conflicts that Mary faced. Mm -hmm. So kind of we in the in the film you see that this guy steals this skull from her and, and tries yeah. to sell it off the crocodile in an auction. Um which isn't factual. This is this is all kind of um we've taken liberties here with the with the historical fact mm -hmm. in order to Kind of sharpen it up and, and get the ideas across in mm -hmm. in a sort of ten fifteen minute film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we're also interested to know uh, why you choose this topic in specific. The origins of this film are a bit unusual in that it was um, it was commissioned originally and funded by an organisation that are trying to promote. Oh, okay. um, trying to promote um, young kids, particularly young girls, to get into science subjects at school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so this film really was made for schools in England, so mm -hmm. it would go into schools and, and gets played out to kids that are, mm -hmm. I think, 11 to 12 years old. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I, I joined the project once it was already started. Um, I think Terry, the producer, mm -hmm. was the one who originally suggested doing something on Mary Anning. Uh, she previously made a film about um, Edward Jenner, who invented the, the um, vaccine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with smallpox. Mm -hmm. um, so so I, I didn't really have that much uh, say in the subject matter. It kind of came to me mm -hmm. uh, really underway, if you like, with, with the script and everything. Mm -hmm. And then the, the idea, idea to focus on, on Mary Annings as kids made a lot of sense because, because that's kind of our, our audience. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it, it wasn't really my decision. Um, but the script came to me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I, I'd known a bit about the uh, She, uh, the area she's working is very close to where I live in England. So I kind of knew sort of half of the stories, and, um, and yeah, I just I, yeah, it was just fascinating. Kind of, I'm not surprised that the adaptations of that story. It's kind of a classic kind of underdog story with some amazing science mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in quite a, a nice location as well. Mm -hmm. What kind of message uh, you would like to convey to children through this plot setting? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think, I, think, I, think it, I think Mary was ignored for all of those reasons that, you, that you're saying, you know, gender, class, her age. But I think also because the, the ideas, you know, kind of the ideas that she was coming up with were so sort of outrageous at the time. So I, I guess, guess the, the message, message for, for kids, kids watching it is that, you know, I mean, we, we, we sort of face huge problems with, mm -hmm. you know, climate and, and all sorts of other, you know, there's a lot of pressing issues in the world and the answers, um, the answers to these questions probably will come from that generation. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess part of the message of the film is for, you know, kids to kind of be a bit more courageous in exploring ideas that they have. Um, 
and also for adults to perhaps like, listen to, mm-hmm. you know, listen to them okay. a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess a lot of the big advances that happen, you know, in society throughout the ages have come from unusual places. Um, and I suppose kids are kind of well positioned, you know, with big imaginations and, mm-hmm. you know, they haven't got stuck in ways of thinking yet. And so it's, I don't know, I guess at that age, it's quite an exciting mm-hmm. sort of time. Years old, you know, I think there's a lot of potential for ideas, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of good ideas to come from kids at that age group. So may I know uh, if there's any interest and feedback you you received so far from uh, children audience after they watched this short film? Um, I think there has been, yeah, and not a lot of it comes back to me. I think that Terry says she's been getting um, mm-hmm. getting kind of a lot of positive feedback from teachers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think kids are, are connecting with the film. Which, which is great. great. It's, a, it's a difficult audience, I think. Of, yeah, I believe so. In your world, you know, it's kind of, um, mm-hmm. I think it's very easy for adults to kind of presume what kids want to watch at that age. Um, okay. And I don't, I'm not anything I know any better than anyone else what <laughs> kids of that age want to watch, but they seem to be connecting with it, which is great. And uh, what would be the most interesting thing or the most difficult part when you make this film? Um, I think. You know, obviously, short films, you never have very much money, um, which is challenging. Um, um, and obviously working, you know, working with um, Kiara, who played uh, who played Mary and did an amazing job. Um, but obviously, like, first time acting and things like that. So that's all, you know, I think she did incredibly well, um, considering she, I think she'd not done a huge amount of film before. Um, so a lot of a lot of it was kind of, I guess a lot of the challenges are kind of the unknowns of going into something like that, where you don't have, you don't have quite enough money for the, you know, for the costumes and, and, and kind of, yeah, working with young actors and things like that. Um, but it, but everything, everything was fairly calm. It all sort of came together quite well. So, um, mm. can you also uh, tell us what effort did you put into designing this work? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good to hear. Like we. Mm-hmm. We definitely when we set out to make it we didn't we didn't want it to feel like um you know like we had cut corners because it was a kids film mm-hmm. or because it was a short film or anything like that. we wanted it to feel um you know kind of as visually rich as we mm-hmm. could um and really that's a, a combination of our dop and our production designer um it's been really good um and kind of attributing enough budget to those elements um which we were kind of able to do by keeping the story as contained as possible. Mm-hmm. So I think the original script had quite a few more locations and uh, it was a bit longer. And mm-hmm. so kind of one of the first things I did was just kind of strip it all down and try and kind of you know, essentially spend the money in as few places as possible so that we could um, so that we could ensure that everything everything looked good and felt kind of you know the atmosphere kind of felt right and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a bit of takes a bit of work to, to make it happen, but I think it, it kind of makes the film really. What are the biggest mm-hmm. differences uh, when making a film for people in general? I mean, for adults versus uh, a film for children. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, obviously the content, um, you know, and the, the sort of very basics. You know, this was going into schools, and so mm-hmm. you know, the, it. it I think, I think it's very difficult making films for children because you do have to, you know, there are kind of parameters that need to be hit in terms of things that you can't do. Um, and it's kind of, it's sort of staying within those guidelines, but also not patronizing children. Um, so it's kind of, um, it's a bit of a tricky balance to hit, I think. Um, and then obviously ensuring that the kind of, the, the thematics of it and the kind of science, basic science that you need to understand it, mm-hmm. making sure that's kind of clear enough um, and delivered and kind of entertained. Mm-hmm. In same way. But I don't think there's huge, huge differences. Um, I think possibly you could take an approach where you make children's films a very different way. I think really what children are looking for from a film is not that dissimilar to what adults are looking for in a yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And so, really, the best way to, you know, obviously there are, there are 
there are kind of restrictions there, but I think really the kind of the general aim of the films is largely similar. So you're not, I, I think, yeah, the script is the script is different. A few of the kind of directing performance choices are different. Mm -hmm. but, but beyond that, I, I'm not sure the the, the differences are huge. Mm -hmm. So would you be able sure. to describe a bit about uh, how uh, what a sea dragon looks like? Oh sure, yeah, so the, so the film is titled Sea Dragon, mm -hmm. um, and and the kind of implication of the title really is that um, people were sort of like a sea dragon is kind of a mythical creature that doesn't yeah. exist. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Whereas what Mary found is, is something called an ichthyosaur, mm -hmm. which is um, impossible to spell, mm -hmm. but, but essentially it's, um, it's, a, it's a marine reptile um, from quite a few million years ago. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you exactly um, the period, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of a very unusual looking mm -hmm. It's a very unusual looking kind of dinosaur looking type animal. Um, it's very hard to, it's quite hard to explain what it, what it looks like. Um, but yeah, so, the, so, so what, what happened was Mary found the skull and she also found the rest of the skeleton, um, which now is in the Natural History Museum in London. Um, so the best way to get a sense of what an ichthyosaur is, is figure out how to spell it and then so um is there anything else that you would like to say to our kids audience in taiwan yeah mm -hmm. um no i don't think so just um like a huge thanks to everybody that watches it and i hope, they, hope people take something from it mm -hmm.